welcome to the stage, Shane Marshall. Oh, hey. We good? Thanks, Zach. I've never had my own walk-up music before. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing at this point, but it's great to be back. I hope you're enjoying day two of the conference. Um, as we, well, I, before I get started, I want to again thank the, the committee for such a great conference. The social last night was just the next, another level, so we appreciate that. I don't know when it's going to stop getting better and better and better. I think at some point maybe, but last night was awesome. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bill, thanks for your chairmanship. It's been a great conference. We appreciate it. I'm looking forward to Dave Adamson next year as the, the committee chair. So as we're preparing for this, those that you know me know that I get a little bit nervous the days, the months leading up to this thing. So the, the folks that are helping me put this together, they say, Shane, you're going to be fine. Just, just be yourself. And I look at him, my eyebrow goes up, I'm like, really? And they say, well, maybe not too much yourself. So today is going to be a Shane-ish day, not a full-on Shane experience. So sit back and relax. It's going to be fun. Um, as Carlos said yesterday, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do some audience participation. I'm glad you all came back. I think I was a little bit worried that that might scare a few of you away, but clearly it didn't. So welcome back. Um, so this will be something different for us, and we're, it should be a lot of fun. And something I need to make sure that you all remember from last year, I got up here and said, that failure is only feedback. So at the end of this, if you need to give me some feedback, I totally understand that. So just share back, give us some feedback. We can only make this better if we know. Um, just a little bit of a housekeeping item. There's a flyer on your table that shows you how to log into the system. You're gonna need that to, so that we can participate together. So it's easy to do. You put in the bottom to the, the message is UDOT, and up in the top, the two is two, two, Three, three, three. That's simple. You'll be ready to go, and when it comes time, we'll start actively participating. So yesterday, Carlos mentioned that we have been engaging with this, in this conversation about culture with our UDOT employees. We've reached out to over 900 people, either through surveys or focus groups. Really heard a lot of good things. We heard that UDOT is a great place to work, a good place to work. It's not perfect yet, but it's, it's coming along. And we also heard three things, three themes over the course of that, that, that conversation. And they were teamwork, flexibility, and trust. And I think those words really represent who we are. And they represent the value that you want, the values that you expect when you come to work. That's what you want in your culture. You want teamwork, flexibility, and trust when you show up every day. I think they, those three words set the framework of our culture. So to date, though, we've only had the chance to reach out to our internal UDOT employees. But we know that culture extends to and is defined by everyone that works with us, whether you're a consultant, a contractor, a supplier, or one of our transportation partners. You are part of the culture. And your willingness to work with us, alongside us, and in a lot of cases represent us, means you are a very big part of that culture. So we thought that we would take advantage of this huge audience today and help us to define the culture a little bit better. Because if we have the right culture in place, our partnership will definitely lead to success. But why culture? Why have we had the conversation? Why did we start it in the first place? Because like I said, the right culture leads to success. We have a $4.3 billion program coming up over the next three years. And we have Carlos's top 10 that he rolled out yesterday that we need to accomplish. And can you imagine all the snow that's going to fall on our roadways over the next few years? All of these things that we're facing, if we don't have the right culture in place, the right culture defined by you, not by leadership, we're not going to be successful. That's why culture is so important. We need the culture in place that allows the innovation to thrive in order to be successful in this endeavor. So what are we going to do today? Instead of you just sitting there listening to me all day, which I know most of you are here to do, but we're not going to do that. We're going to interact a little bit. You're going to help us define what that right culture is. I have my own thoughts of what that might be, but I want to hear from you. So everyone in here is invited to participate. In fact, expected to participate. So like the saying goes, there's no such thing as a free lunch. 
even if <laughs> right in the middle of a joke ah so there's no such thing as a free lunch even if most of you are paying for your lunch i'm still going to make you work for it today and we're going to do that in two ways the first way is a very simple way we're going to do some word clouds around those three words trust flexibility and teamwork i'm going to ask you to tell me tell us what those words mean to you and all you have to do is text very simple no one has to stand up and say anything. All you have to do is text in. And to do that again, log in, send, a, send the message you dot to 22333. Make sure you get there. It's coming up soon. So we'll put up each word, and then we'll give you a minute to share your thoughts, the words that come to mind when you see the, team, the word like teamwork. And as, as you text in, we'll have a word cloud that will develop on the screen behind me. And the more often a particular words come in, the bigger that, that word gets. So you're, you're, uh, you can send in as many texts as you want, as many words as you want, and they'll appear up on the screen. <laughs> so there were a few people laughing about that. I, I'm a little bit nervous, I'll have to say, about what might show up behind me. Um, so a couple things you need to keep in mind. One, the, all the texts are not anonymous. All right? When you send in a text, your phone number comes with it. So make sure you keep it professional. All right? So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to share some stories. We're going to take some time to talk about when you saw those words in action. This is where the homework Carlos gave you yesterday comes into play. So he asked you to think about a time, a personal story, when you saw teamwork, flexibility, and trust in action at your job. And then we're just going to share those at your table. Take a few minutes, share with each other those stories. So some of you might be thinking, as kind of I did when, we, when this idea was rolled out, why stories? Some of you may be even rolling your eyes about why would we do something like this? And I think it's because stories really give those words meaning. They give those words understanding. You can start building connection to your own experience with those stories. It's not just a definition any longer. It's something that happened to you or happened to your friend. It starts to build the idea, of the, the idea of the word, the feeling and the emotion behind those words, not the simple definition. So when we were putting this together, I asked Joe Walker, why, Joe, why would we tell these, these stories? And he explained why. And then he said, let me show you an example, Shane. And he starts telling me about a story that when he worked on a team, he's, he went through about a minute of this. And... I don't think he said the word, the word teamwork one time, but I knew what he was talking about from the story. And when he was done, he said, Shane, what were you thinking when I said this story? And I thought, I, was, I put myself in a similar situation, on a team, working well together, where we're holding each other accountable. So by him telling that story, I understood what teamwork was. So that's the importance of these stories. And it should be a little bit of fun. Um, it won't be a long journey but it'll be short and sweet and it'll be a lot of fun so let's test the technology everyone logged in everyone ready to go get out your phones this is the first time ever that we've said get your phones out instead of put them away get them out we're going to start we're going to start this with a test question the answer is simple it's a or b that's all you need to know a or b so before I get to the question, though, I need to tell Carlos that he needs to remember that failure is only feedback, okay? So keep that in mind as, we, as I show you what this is. And again, the responses are not anonymous. All right, so in honor of No Shave November, should, should Carlos A, grow a mustache, or B, not grow a mustache? So get out your phones, A or B. All right? Huh. So, <laughs> dude, come on. You're going to get me fired. Get going. So, there really is no right or wrong answer. Carlos is a good sport about this. But I, I'm looking at him, and I'm, there is no right or wrong. But looking at him right now, the correct answer might be B. <laughs> but I'm not going to influence your vote whatsoever. All right. You guys are trying to help me out. All right, that's probably good enough, Jess. Let's cut that one off. Well, Carlos, the wisdom of the crowd. <laughs> 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 
We, we cleared this with Lori yesterday, so she's fine. You know, I asked Carlos if he'd be okay if, if the answer was yes. And he said, yeah, that's no problem. And then I looked at his schedule. He's not going to be here the month of November. So I don't know that we're going to see this anyway. But that's a handsome guy. All right. So we're going to do this for real now. How many responses do we have? Over 600. There's 2,000 people in this room. So the rest of you, let's get going. So we're going to do this for real. The word is going to be teamwork. And I'm asking you to define what good teamwork looks like when it's working well. Now, this one, you can text in as many words as you like. And as you text them in, the word cloud will grow. grow. Yes? All right. Man, already started. I should note that when you text in a, a phrase, the words will be broken down into each individual word. So it can be one word, or you can link words together by a hyphen. Okay, Jess, let's close that one. Thank you all very much. Now from these, this word cloud, we understand what teamwork means in a much broader sense. Teamwork can mean so many things to different people. Now we have a better understanding of what it means. It's interesting that one of the words that we've heard is trust, and within teamwork, the biggest word up there is trust. And collaboration as well. Fun, definitely. Friends, family. That's what I think about when I think of teamwork as well. So thank you very much for that. We're going to memorialize this, and we're going to further refine our culture because of this. Okay, so now let's talk about, let's try to explain teamwork with stories. And we're going to kick this off with a story up here. We asked Adam Lowe, who is our traffic signal engineer down in Region 3 and Region 4, to share us a story about teamwork. So Adam? He's saying good things about teamwork. Ripped down the traffic signal mast arm around nine o'clock at night. Um, you know, it really took, of course at that hour, you know, nobody's really working. We have on-call personnel that went out and evaluated the situation, gave me a call. It's important that we all make ourselves available to, to help each other out, you know, regardless what time of day it is. Um, I got out there and we, we got a plan in place. It took calling uh, UDOT traffic and safety to get approval to hire a, to, to call out a contractor. Um, you know, we worked well with the contractor to get them out there ASAP with their equipment and get things put back together before, before you know, the rush hour the next morning. So that's teamwork, teamwork by Adam. So what were you thinking when he was explaining that? Could you see yourself in a similar situation, having to re rely on others to get them something done? Rely on your team members to get something done. So, okay, we're going to try telling stories as a little group now. There's a bunch of folks that will be wandering around um, trying to facilitate that. They're in, they're in yellow. I'm not going to call on anyone to share their story, but if you would like to share your story with the, with the group, just let one of these folks know, and they'll give you a microphone, and you can share your story about teamwork with the whole group. All right, so take, take a few minutes. Talk amongst yourself at your tables, tell stories about teamwork, when it was important, when it worked well, and have a little fun.
all right? We have about 30 seconds left, wrap it up a little bit. I know we have, Eileen has someone that is willing to share. Okay, let's see if we can encourage some brave soul to share their teamwork story with us. Eileen, do you have somebody? Yes, no? Okay, so tell us who you are, where you work, and what you do. My name is Peter Tang. I'm one of the project managers in Region 2. And I didn't volunteer to do this, but <laughs> our team pulled together and got me on the spot. So, <laughs> um, this it's a project that we have going on right now in 106 South, out there in South Jordan City. And at 1300 West, there is a bridge, a pedestrian bridge that was built last time we widened the, the road. And South Jordan for years have been wanting to get rid of that bridge because um, they couldn't get developers to come in to the, uh, develop the parcels next to the bridge because the bridge is so massive. And at the, at the same time, West Jordan is needing to build another uh, pedestrian bridge at a location where there's a student that was killed uh, at a crosswalk a couple years ago. And for three months, our team has been talking to both city and um, they were not in very good terms with each other for some of the project all this time. And the night before we have the contractor out there to take down the bridge, um, we kept persuading them and they came together. And the end result was that South Jordan was able to take that bridge down and then West Jordan is spending $65,000 and, and haul the bridge to their site that saved them about half a million dollars. So, so in some way I feel we were successful in working out the differences and bridging the communication gaps and we all have good desire to, to make a good thing out of it. We just need to uh, continue to work together and trust each other that we will look out for each other. So that's the story. Thank you, Peter. Let's give Peter a round of applause. Appreciate that. Matt? Let's see if, uh, yeah, it's on, we're good, thanks. All right, uh, Julia Collins, and I, you guys can, that's better, okay. Um, I'm a senior transportation planner with Park City Municipal. Um, we had an interesting um, collaborative So we have a very engaged group of citizens in Park City, <laughs> and um, we also have a very active um, group of visitors and residents along our Deer Valley Drive corridor, um, and also on the 43 Acres of Bayfield and Little Breeze Pathway. And I called up UDOT Planning and said, I heard about this Seattle data set, can you teach me more?
Thank you, Julia. See, it's easy. You just stand up and grab a mic and talk. It's not a problem at all. Um, I promised many people today that once they knew that we were going to do this, I would not call on them from up here. So I promise I won't do that. Lisa Wilson. Um, so we're going to move on to the second word. And the second word is flexibility. Now, I think this one can, is going to be, the word cloud on this one is going to be much bigger because it can mean so many things to people. If you're a contractor, it might mean you want to see a culture that allows the DOT to be flexible when, when something happens in the field. If you're a supplier, it might mean to you that you want to see a, a culture that allows the DOT to be flexible on the products that they use. And if you're an employer, E, you might want a flexible culture that allows you to go from one job to another job. I know that's what I value when I think of flexibility. But what do you value? So the poll is now open. Start texting away. And let's build this word cloud. Yoga. <laughs> what? <laughs> These are, all right, we're going to find out who put that note. <laughs> the challenges you run into, you try to do something live. Someone else. Oh. So when we have, so I'm, I'm envisioning the future of some, something written down, and, and our <laughs> culture is defined by yoga, <laughs> as defined by this group of people. Wow, that was a, a ton of words. All right, Jess, let's end that one. <sighs> Can we do some <laughs> editing? Okay. What? <laughs> you know, I was talking to some folks beforehand, and they said, they said are you going to do a BYU joke this time? No. They, the way they play is a joke enough, so I don't need to do any anything at all. So, but seriously, flexibility, compromise, certainly, understanding, that's a great word for flexibility. This is big, bold yoga in there. I'm not sure how to overcome that. Um, so let's move on to stories then, all right? Maybe we can get some more of the stories. So we're going to move on to stories. We asked Kim Krein, who is our Region 3 admin assistant, to tell us a story about flexibility, what it means to her. So let's play Kim's video. I can't do Kim. I am a single mother and the flexibility in this department has meant the world to me. I've never missed any school event. I've always uh, volunteered for a class party when my son was in kindergarten. I volunteered for his computer lab. So for an hour every Monday, I went to the school to spend an hour with kindergarten in, in their computer lab. And then I've had to leave to take my son to the Instacare to get stitches in his chin, get staples in his head. So as a parent, just knowing that you can take time off to do these things and be with your family and adjust your schedule on a Friday. So when my son was younger, he wasn't in daycare all day and I get to be a mom and take time that way. It's meant the world to me. Thank you, Kim. So to Kim, flexibility means a flexible schedule. So she can be with her son when he needs her, probably often. Um, Kim is the sweetest person in the world, so for Kim, roll tide. Appreciate everything you do, Kim. So what does flexibility mean to you? Again, let's take a few minutes at your table and talk about some flexibility. And if someone is so inclined, let's hear from you. All right, next few minutes, talk amongst yourself.
All right. Maybe take another 30 seconds to wrap it up. And then we'll, I think we have a couple of volunteers. So Matt, you had somebody? And who else did? Johnny, the face of Utah. Okay. All right, let's hear from a lucky soul. John, do you want to go? Oh, you need a mic. Who you are, where you work. Um, hi, I'm Devin Weeder. I work at Utah Racing Team. I'm a communications engineer and construction rig. Um, for flexibility, I think the most important thing for me was that I felt like I was at a station every night with the dogs. Like, I just kind of fit the role. So I think flexibility for me, or I wouldn't be able to do any of the other roles I did, is I just felt like I fit. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work out. Very good example. Thank you very much. Matt. Matt, could you stand on a chair, please? I can't see you. That's, that's, not, a, that's not a short joke at all. I just couldn't see him. My name is Justin Head. Um, I'm at Echo Foods. Um, I'm Region 1 uh, in the design department. Um, about four months ago, um, our house caught fire. And, uh, well, it, it's been very traumatic for the last four months. So the flexibility at work, um, a bunch of my coworkers, project managers, those that I work with have been extremely flexible. I come in earlier, stay later, work Fridays. And the flexibility for working for UDOC has been amazing. Um, it's, it's been a hard time for our family, but um, with the flexibility, it's been a lot easier to deal with our, our tragedy. So. Thank you. So I heard a couple of places as I was wandering around, um, flexibility in terms of al being allowed to do something different at work that you don't have to do the same thing every day, that you're not, you can try new things, like Devin said, something different all the time. I think that, for me, is the fundamental thing to culture. If, if I was, if I had to come to work every day and my boss had to tell me what to do every single day, that would just not be the culture I wanted to be in. So um, I can understand why it's an integral part of our culture. Last word. The last word is trust. So how does trust help you in your job or what is it about trust that makes you not a great place to work with or at? I think this one might be a little more difficult to define. I think this one might be easier to explain through a story, but give it a shot. Let's create a word cloud around trust. is definitely not yoga. I'm afraid to point words out now. <laughs> Love, team, family. Always to point out the big ones, the good ones. <laughs> Compassionate. Awesome. All right, Jess, let's close that one up. Trust is, is difficult to, I think, put words around, but love, compassion, family, the three biggest ones on there right now. That's what you want. When I think of trust, those are the three things I think about, my family, 
They trust me. They, re they respect me. Um, I trust them to do the right thing. That same, that same thing applies to the people I work with. I trust that when they're going to do something, they're going to do, do it the best way they can and that they know that I have their back in, in whatever situation that comes up. So let's try this with stories. We've asked Jeff Casper, who is our equipment shop, shop supervisor, to give us a story about trust. Last winter, we experienced more snow than we've gotten in a long time. We experienced a high volume of repairs during some of these storms. And we sent out a lot of mechanics throughout the night and even during the day in remote areas. Uh, we have a lot of trust in these mechanics that we can send them to far reaching places and they have the right tools and the equipment and we trust their judgment. When they're out there, if they say this needs fixed or that needs fixed, we trust their judgment that they know what they're doing and they can get that truck back into working order. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> I think, too, one more round of applause to those mechanics, those truck drivers who put their lives on line every single winter for us. Okay, last storytelling telling time. Take a few minutes and let's talk about trust. Ready? Go. All right, a few more seconds and we'll wrap this up. We're getting short on time. So who had, over there again? Okay, let's, let's hear from, who's over there? Matt. Hi, I'm Matt Luker. I work with Redox Signal Operations in the Traffic Operations Center. And I wanted to talk about the trust that we have um, with our consultant partners and with the cities and counties that also operate traffic signals in Utah. We share a uh, 
computer system with the cities and the counties and they trust us and we trust them to have access to that system and not to break each other break each other's things or anything like that but we would work together so that we provide a seamless signal operation for the public thank you matt Anybody else? Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. They, these guys trusted me to finally stand up, so. All right, my name's Chris Savrakis. I work in the Traffic Operations Center as an ITS project manager. And, you know, I encounter it every hour of every day I'm at work here and even in my personal life. Trust is a, is a big thing. Um, I, I, I depend on it and other people depend on it. And it's a two-way street. The other project managers and the other technical disciplines, you know, trust me and depend on me to do the parts I need to do. It doesn't always work, but that, that motivation to drive, to get that thing done in the most optimal way possible, leaving all the words before trust all come into play. So, you know, trust is a big thing when you build that capital with yourself as well as the other coworkers you have meeting after meeting project after project with contractors and designers um, you, you guys all trust that we have to get that all done at the end of the day to make be successful for ourselves and the public that we're doing all this for so thank you Chris <laughs> well those were six incredibly good stories, nine, I guess, if you count the ones that were on the screen, um, really helped define culture in my mind, what you want the culture to look like. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for your participation. Level engagement was, was awesome. A um, little bit concerned about what that might look like in a group this big, but I think it worked out really well, so thank you very much. And thanks again in advance for the feedback. Um, we can't improve this if you don't give us comments. So at the end of the, end of the conference, you're going to get a chance to share your thoughts. Please do. Um, I can't ask everyone in this room to take a chance if I'm not willing to take one. So I'm definitely willing to hear your feedback. So why did I just spend, why did we just spend 30 minutes talking about this? It's because teamwork, trust, and flexibility are who we are. They can be seen in every single thing we do across the entire UDOT family. And I think it's important that we use these words and these stories help guide us as we move forward. Me, for me personally, I want to use your, defini dis your definition of culture as a roadmap to help guide the decisions I make. I want to be able to say, does this decision help the culture or take away from the culture? I want to take a look at our policies and say, are these policies helping or are they getting in the way? Do we need to tweak them? Do we need to throw one out? What do we need to do with them to help the culture? So your assignment from today is very, very easy. Simply just continue this conversation. Keep sharing the stories that you heard today, make and have the people around you share their stories with you. And use this conversation as well as future conversations to help further our culture. And promise me you'll keep the communication open and honest. And give us feedback. When you see us making decisions that go against the culture, let us know and make us explain why. There might be a really good reason. Hold us accountable to that why. We need to, we need to let you understand why we made a decision. I think it's because of people like you that UDOT is such a great place to work. I've worked here almost 25 years now, and I wouldn't change it for a minute. It's because of people like you that UDOT is ready to lead this state and the nation in this exciting new world. And I think working together in a spirit of trust and flexibility, we can accomplish any challenges we face including keeping Utah moving. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time and effort. Enjoy the conference, and please come back tomorrow for the award ceremony. Thank you.